System secure. In the previous segments, we have introduced the indicators of, choices of, and effects of weapons of mass destruction. In the following segment, we will consider a scenario of an event which has occurred and what you could and should do. Your first action is to call for assistance. Secondly, as hard as it may be, you need to keep yourself from becoming a victim of the incident. How can you help people if you are unconscious? While you are not a trained first responder, it is useful to know what those first responders will need and how you can contribute to everyone's safety. After the segment, there will be time for discussion. At the end of the segment, you will be able to, one, describe whom you would notify in the case of a weapons of mass destruction incident, two, isolate or evacuate persons, and three, be able to know how to protect yourself so you don't become a victim. The first stage of action for you is to notify first responders and your superiors according to your post orders. Use a landline if at all possible. Since you already know very well how your site is organized, selecting the safest approach route for the first responders should be possible for you. Your first priority is life, your own and everyone else's. Incident management means preventing a problem from becoming even more serious. Be prepared to answer questions that the first responders will ask about the incident. As you are calling for assistance, stay on the line after the dispatcher has gathered all necessary information or until it gets to be unsafe for you to stay there. The first issue in the aftermath of a WMD attack is whether to shelter people in place or to give orders to evacuate. Your post orders will tell you who has the authority to order an evacuation. In helping law enforcement and other first responders with this stage, you are performing an important function. As we mentioned before, evacuation decisions depend on company policy, your post orders, and whether the buildings are public or private. Being aware of your post orders is crucial. Review them. If you don't have your post orders, ask your supervisor for them. The decision to shelter in place versus evacuation depends on accurate assessment of the situation and has many variables that must be considered. If the situation involves hazardous materials, you should first take careful note of the wind direction. You and other people who may be exposed will want to first move crosswind and then upwind to avoid exposure. In the case of an incident involving weapons of mass destruction, expect mass hysteria. The more order and calm reassurance you can provide, the better. Help as much as you can. Consider the possibility of secondary devices and try not to move anything. Stay alert about possible suspicious activity and articles that don't belong. Focus on protecting evidence as well as victims. You cannot help others if you are unable to function so your self-protection is essential. Do not become a victim. Do not rush in. Assess the situation and keep your distance. Try to determine the wind direction. Do your best to avoid contaminated areas. Consider the three main concepts in protective measures. Time, distance, and shielding. Time means to subject people for as short a time as possible to the hazard. Time is of the essence to save lives. Time also means the danger will lessen the more time passes. Distance means avoiding contact with a contaminant. And shielding means using any protection you have available. In conclusion, your first task is always to notify the proper authorities while keeping yourself safe. Secondly, to help the victims as much as possible. Try to put as much time and distance between them and the danger as you can. Finally, shield yourself and the persons in your area from the hazards using any physical means you have available. Your calm and reassuring presence will help. Let's consider what a potential terrorist group needs in order to carry out an attack. First, they may need more people to join the organization, so they conduct efforts to increase group membership. Secondly, they need money to travel, rent cars and houses, buy equipment and so on. 
Next, they need to select or acquire weapons. The chosen date of an attack may also be important. Terrorists often choose a date of national significance such as Independence Day. Now they need access to a target site, and this is frequently where you come in. Terrorists will attempt to gain access to the sites they've chosen in order to check them out. They do it by frequently wearing uniforms that make them seem harmless or legitimate, such as cleaning crews. They may also be impersonating police officers. Terrorists also want to know as much as possible about the selected target sites, such as building security measures, the number of possible victims, the target's vulnerabilities, the predictable schedule of incoming and outgoing people and packages, and possible escape routes. The following tape excerpt was captured from a terrorist in Singapore by Singapore Intelligence. The terrorist was conducting surveillance of a bus station where his group was intending to plant a bomb. While both the audio and video are somewhat rough because of the amateur taping, you can clearly hear that he is alerting his co-conspirators to the normal flow of people and vehicles at the MRT station called Yishun. You will hear him describing what he is looking for in selecting a target. U.S. military personnel will be dropped off on the bus and they will walk towards the MRT station. And this is a one, of, one of the buses, the, one of the regular buses that uh, ferry the military personnel from Sembawang to Yishun MRT station. So those, those personnel after they alighted from the bus, they were moved towards the advantage station. As you can see on the far left, uh, when people walking towards the station, they will walk the same way. This is uh, the sign of a uh, Yishun Yamata station, as viewed from the opposite side of the road, at block 146, I'm sorry, block 152. Uh, this is the bicycle bay as viewed from the footpath that leads towards the MRT station. You will notice that some of the boxes that are uh, placed on the motorcycles, these are the same type of boxes which we intend to use. Beyond those motorcycles, you can see somebody waiting or standing beside a car. That is a pickup point where those personnel will queue up to board their bus or a light from the bus. This is a taxi stand. There's the entrance of the temple with many vehicles parked there. So it will not be uh, suspicious to have a motorcycle or a bicycle there. The pillars of the MRT tracks are very, very solid. You will notice there's a drainage hole. Drainage hole. It might be useful. The next step is also crucial. The terrorists must now attempt to move their chosen weapons into position. This is also a vulnerable point in the process and one in which your powers of observation are important. If the terrorists succeed in moving their chosen weapon to the site of attack, their next step, unless it is to be a suicide attack, is to escape. What is your role as a security officer in the prevention and possible handling of a terrorist attack? It can be summarized in three words. Recognize, report, and react. This program will train you how to recognize pre-incident indicators in the stages we just described and show you what you should report about what you notice. Reporting events or suspicions according to your post orders is very important. The program will also show you how to react both in cases of suspicious activity and in the case that a WMD attack occurs. In the following lesson, we will go into more detail about each of the three steps and stages.